Well, that's pretty terrible, but I did it again. Somehow I pushed a mute on my uh, microphone, but thankfully this is only a 10 minute video. So this is a Samsung S20 FE, um, and the guy, the customer, uh, messed up the battery connector on it. So as you can see here, the battery connector, you, you, you can just see the pins here. It's right below the SMG781V. Um, you can just, you can see just the pins still there, um, held on to the actual logic board, and the black part is missing. So what I'm going to do is take these pins off and then um, solder a new connector on there, and it should be good to go. So this this is going to be a really simple repair, simple connector repair, not a big deal. That that little thing that I'm pointing to in my tweezers, there's there's nothing supposed to be over there. I, I don't know. That might be like a separate feature, like maybe a 3G or something like that that just wasn't used on this logic board. So maybe that's what it is. But anyways, this is the connector. I'm gonna add a little bit of flux. It's uh, I've I've only been using VS213 uh, Tacky Flux, the Amtech. Um, that is the best flux flux that I that uh, I've ever used. Um, however, I will say that if you want to use the tool, was it tool T U U L? The, I think that's the Union Repair brand. They they actually make a decent flux as well. Um, you know, I mean, by the time you get it shipped over here, it's the, the price is just going to be a little bit less, and it's kind of like ah, I'll just use the I'll just use the Amtech stuff. Um, so, anyways, what I'm doing here is I'm just using my JBC C105 113 uh, tip to remove the um, the broken um, pins on the connector okay and I was using the knife tip before which is the C105 112 and I for some reason it just kept going bad on me I kept having to replace them and they're you know it's like 30 some dollars a tip so I found that these C105 um, 1 one uh, thirteens are are so much better, and they last. And they this this thing has lasted me at least six months. <laughs> so I don't I don't I haven't replaced. I don't even know if I've replaced it or not. But anyways, just stick with the C one hundred five one thirteen, and this is for the J JBC uh, NASE two B uh, nano soldering station. I know there's a newer version of it out right now, maybe the two C that uses a different um, that uses different tips. So. Uh, this is a slightly older version that used the C105 tips. <clears throat> so, let's see. Okay, so, you know, lots of flux. And so I just brought out my FM, Mahako FM202. And I really like using this, uh, the soldering iron for, like, for, because it gets really hot. I set it up to about 800 degrees Fahrenheit. And I use a big tip, and it just melts anything. <laughs> and so anyways, as you can see, I, I, I don't, really take care of my tips so it's it was a little bit oxidized so I'm just I'm just um retinning it making it look shiny and and that's pretty much what I should be doing you know but I don't really these chips are these tips are relatively cheap compared to the JVC one so it's not a huge deal so anyway look you, you run it through put a little flux on it run it through the um connector on the logic board and it just kind of melts like butter and it just takes everything so so it, it works well um but you know you can't do micro soldering on it with with that tip. Um, you can just kind of remove and clean stuff. So I'm actually going to clean this, uh, clean the um, the pins on the logic board because the connector has to lay flat. So if you don't clean them, sometimes it's like it's not it doesn't lay flat very well. And you know the the usually the only time I don't clean them is is when I'm using hot air to put put the connector back on because then you know once you if you use hot air, then you can kind of just put the connector on there and just kind of let it sit down um, in the melted solder after it heats up. So <clears throat> I'm going to put a little bit of flux on here. And like I said, this is a relatively easy repair. So um, you can get these connectors on eBay. And you can just pop them down here. Um, so just make sure they're aligned, make sure there's equal space on both sides. Um, and there's not much to it. So now I'm going to switch over to my nano tweezers. And for the nano tweezers, I exclusively use the C105-101 tips which is the 0.1 millimeter tips. It's, it's basically the smallest in size. And these do go bad. And the you know the 0.1 millimeter turns into probably like 
30 millimeters after a short while, but you can still use them, you know. They're just a little bit harder for tighter jobs uh, over time. Uh, but um, one of the biggest tips that I uh, that I got for preserving these tips was to lower the temperature uh, temperature on my station. So um, I, I go to right around 300 degrees Celsius, maybe 290 or something like that, 290 to 300 degrees Celsius. And um, that's what I leave it at, and I don't ever change it. So, so that seems to really preserve the tips. Before I was going through tips like God, man, every month or something like that, and they're, you know they're thirty dollars a tip, so thirty-five dollars a tip. So as you can see, that gets kind of expensive. But now they last months. I don't even think about them anymore. Okay, so let's see. Tack on the end tabs first to anchor the um, connector down, just so that you can. Um, solder the other the smaller pins a little bit easier, you know um, So I took I kind of like tinned it then I like Put it in cleaned it off and everything all the solder cleaned off so I'm, I need to apply a little bit more solder onto it and I'm using Kester 6337 solder Just make sure you use ample flux that'll help uh, prevent bridging and and um, it'll make uh, the joint shiny basically so that's probably the biggest problem that people have when they um, when they do soldering they just don't use enough flux or they use bad flux or whatever it is you know so I definitely add a little bit more flux you really can't use too much flux. I mean, I guess if you do, I mean, if it's like too much where you can't see it, then that's not good. But, uh, yeah, add plenty of flux. I mean, that's the secret sauce. So, tack on the ends here. I mean, this, yeah, there's not much to this. I mean, this is, you know, if you've been doing this for a while, this is boring as hell. Um, so, what was I saying? Okay, so... What I said earlier, which never got posted because the microphone was on mute, was that somebody had mentioned that I should do these in 1080p. Um, but the problem with 1080p is that um, I have to connect it to HDMI into my computer, and then if I do HDMI, then I have to use I have to use OBS, which is a you know video uh, recording software. And if I have to use OBS, then I have to edit it, which it just means that it's just going to take for take way too much time, and I, it's not something that I'm like thrilled about having to edit these videos. Uh, so the software that I'm using right now is called Screencast-O-Matic, and the the bad thing about that is that they only support up to 720p. Um, so, but it allows me to like use multiple cameras and then cut in, cut out, and just kind of start stop with my mouse, and it just makes it very easy to use, and and I don't have to edit it. <laughs> Um, so anyways, unless there's a solution like Screencast-O-Matic with 1080p that you know of, um, you can comment and I'll read it, uh, but unless there's a solution like that, uh, I'm, I'm not going to switch for now. Um, even though I do love the quality, the quality upgrade, but time-wise, it just, God, it's, it really sucks and it'd be painful for me. So I'm just cleaning this with 99% uh, IPA with uh, Q-tip right now. Use one side to wash wash all the flux off, use the other side to dry it up. <clears throat> so let's see, what else? So Screencast-O-Matic, 10, 1080p. Um, I, I definitely need to upgrade my, uh, <laughs> my camera setup, but again, like I said, I just have not been able to find a, a better, a good solution right now, a quick solution. And I really want to get on TikTok. I mean, there's there's not I don't see too many people on TikTok right now doing micro soldering, you know. And I suspect that it's just probably a little time consuming, you know. For me, it is at least. Unless I can find a quick way to do it, it's gonna be hard for me to post on TikTok. But I I would love to get on TikTok though, um, because uh, although you know what I did see this this little uh, interview with with Zach King. He's he's the guy that does the um, he does like the 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 the, the videos where. He, you look at something and it's like, oh man, and then he, and there, like, he looks at a picture of a car or something like that, and the car is, and he runs to the car and starts up the car or something, you know, Zach King, anyways, I'm sure you know who he is if you've, uh, 
if you watch these viral videos. But anyways, he was saying that basically YouTube, I'm, I'm just kind of going all over the place now, but <laughs> I'm, all, I'm into affiliate marketing and stuff like that. But anyways, he said YouTube should be the main driver of income revenues, you know, which makes sense because YouTube has probably has the biggest brand, makes the most, you know, has the most amount of money involved in it, you know, and I, I, I think I saw something about him posting his revenues on TikTok and they were just negligible. They were like nothing <coughs> compared to YouTube, you know, I mean, you can, you can make, I mean, I think there's some kids selling toys right now making like 20, 20 something, 20, 30 million dollars just off YouTube ads, you know, um, TikTok's just not there right now. Instagram just not there right now. But, um, what Zach King said was to use those two social media platforms to feed into YouTube. So, but YouTube should be the, the main audience driver. Um, anyways, but you know, TikTok is so big right now. And I'm on it all the time. Um, anyways, this video is about to end. Uh, call this a day here. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to post some more as soon as I can. Thanks, bye. I just wanted to say thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We make these videos to help you guys learn how to do micro soldering um, for normal repairs. Um, I want to take this time to promote our online course here. We created an online course hosted at udemy.com um, if you go directly to udemy it's 150 bucks if you go through microsoldering.com click on store shop and then click on this first uh, product right here there's a coupon code that uh, gives you fifty dollars off of our online course so our online course it was created by Tom and myself um, it contains four and a half to five hours of online video instruction um, it'll teach you everything that you need to know to get started with micro soldering so basically we um, we start with the basics you know just the component level um, how to use ZXW tools um, what kind of how to set up your tools what kind of tools you need um, how to set up your hot air rework stations um, use your micro pencil and tweezers and DC power supply and all that stuff and then we go into actual repairs so the four most common problems are no backlight no touch no charge and loop disease and with the newer versions of the iPhones um, we also have a section on uh, logic board separation because with the 10 and up uh, the logic boards come in two pieces so we also have a section on how to separate them and put them back together and then our last section is um, all about data recovery so this is it's it's four and a half hours of just good stuff just to help you get started okay and with the way that cell phone repair is going these days I think it's um, essential to learn how to do micro soldering for your business um, if you're interested like I said just go to the website here microsoldering.com and click on uh, store shop and then click on this right here and you'll get fifty dollars off so thank you for watching our channel and hopefully you'll enjoy the course thank you